And welcome to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. How is everybody today? It's Saturday afternoon. We usually do our show live at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific, but we have a very special Saturday afternoon episode for all of you. Hope your day is going well. And thanks for joining us. We send you lots of lovity, which we do on our show with our Kindness Matters mug, because kindness does matter. We just got a little afternoon coffee in here. And uh, it's not warm because every time I make a hot coffee, it ends up uh, sitting on a counter or on a desk or somewhere, and I have to keep reheating it. So I was smart. We got a couple of cubes in here, and we've made this iced coffee. Really, really smart. Good to have you with us today. Thanks for joining us. I hope your day is going well. Of course, uh, at the time of this broadcast, it's a very special day. It's uh, September 11th, so there's lots of remembrances. Uh, we actually have a special broadcast. We're doing it 6 p.m. Eastern tonight, 3 p.m. Pacific. Um, about uh, the events of the day and a very special heartwarming episode, actually, uh, that's coming up. So we hope you'll join us for that. But uh, we always send you some light, love, and levity, or has happened on this show. The word levity sort of slipped out of my mouth last summer, a year ago summer. And after that happened, everybody fell in love with the word. So our viewers, who we absolutely love, call themselves the Loveties. They're part of our Lovety squad. Yeah, they're always sharing. They're always uh, sharing the links. They're always telling everybody about our series, and we love them for that. It's really amazing the connection we've made here internationally, too. We have an international audience that watches us live and supports the show, and we thank you. Uh, everybody on Instagram and Twitter and on uh, YouTube, of course, we encourage you to. We would love it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is the channel that you're watching right now, Gym Masters TV. And also click that notification bell so that way there you never miss any of our live episodes of our entertainment lifestyle talk show series, The Gym Master Show Live. And also in, to, in addition to that, we also do pop-up shows too, where sometimes we just do a surprise pop-up show and it's a host viewer chat session. And those can go for as long as we want. And they're really cool. And you guys chime in and you talk about all kinds of cool things going on in your life. So look for those. We're due for another one of those surprise JMS pop-up shows coming up soon. So stick with us for that. But again, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And uh, we would love it also if you give this episode a thumbs up. Yeah, on our YouTube channel. Give it a thumbs up. That really does help us as well. And uh, leave a comment on the YouTube channel for us as well. If you enjoy this episode, uh, we would welcome that. And we love that. So I hope you're having a good day. Feel free to comment live during the show. Again, Lee Tannen is uh, waiting in the wings in Hudson Valley, New York. If you're not familiar with that area, beautiful area of New York State, just north of New York City. And uh, nice to have you with us today. Nice. And uh, my voice is a little lower today. I was doing a lot of voiceover work, narrating hours and hours of video. So uh, my voice is a little lower. Actually, it is low, but I'm talking lower. I don't know why. I think I feel like I'm still doing the narration. Uh, but it's nice to see everybody. Hello from France. Nice to see you in France. We love our French audience. Thank you very much for joining us live. And also, we love our Swedish audience. Jane is watching from Sweden. Hello, everyone. And Jim, you guys, uh, if you uh, love to read really incredible books, and I know you guys do because whenever we have authors on the show, you always run out and get their books. And I encourage you to get this one, too. And if you are like me, you've loved everything Lucille Ball, a very special guest, uh, a very, very long relationship, friendship with uh, the one and only Lucille Ball. And uh, we've got lots to share in just a second. Sherry Larson's watching from Kansas. We welcome Sherry. Good to have you with us as well. Thank you very much. Alessandra says she shared this episode. She always shares it on her. That's Jane saying hello. And also Alessandra, these things, these things go by so fast, even we can't keep up with them, all the comments that are happening right now. I have shared it as well. No, the voice isn't hoarse, just been doing hours of narration. So this, we have reached the uh, lower uh, octaves of my voice. Sometimes you hear the higher, today it's lower. Maybe tomorrow I'll talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, when you have a voice person here, my voice could be whatever it wants to be. Uh, welcome to Lovety Hall, Lee Tannen. He's all excited. He's a great guy. He's a class act. And he's, uh, 
again, he's had this wonderful friendship uh, with the Lucille Ball uh, that we know and love so much. Hi, Lovities. I hope everyone is well. Joan Sando is here. We love that. Marsha Watson is here as well. Hi to all. Good to see you, Marsha. And uh, all that you love our show, the new open. Yeah, we spared no expense. Uh, we had, as I mentioned, or if you uh, didn't know, we um, upgraded our open uh, and our th custom theme music for the show. We had that other open and theme for about 475 episodes. Uh, so we figured, you know, September and season two of the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. So we would freshen things up a little bit. And we um, brought in an animator and a designer who are well known and a matter of fact, and they designed the uh, logo. And then the animator, who happens to be his daughter, who animates for the Tonight Show at Jimmy Fallon and so much more, created that animated open for us. And then we selected the custom theme music for our series. And uh, the logo created by the uh, professional designer, um, an illustrator who does Betty Boop. Uh, he just worked on some material for Aerosmith. Uh, really, really terrific person. And they did a beautiful job. So we're loving it too. And hello to you. And Joan says, good afternoon. Jim, Lee, welcome to uh, Lovety Hall. And Kathy is watching in Cleveland, Ohio. And she says, good afternoon, Jim and Loveties. I hope you're all enjoying this beautiful, sunny Saturday. We sure are. And good to see you in Cleveland, Kathy. Sherry Larson says, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. We are. Sherry watches from Kansas. Alessandra in North Carolina says, hi, Loveties. We love that as well. Good to see you. And Anais, also watching from Paris, France. She's here as well. Hi, Jim and Lovety Squad. Good to see you. Carla is watching from South America and Brazil, as she always does. She says, hello, Jim and gang. Looking forward to this Saturday afternoon. We love when you're here from Brazil. Merlin watching in Ontario, Canada. She says, good afternoon, Jim and all Loveties. We love when you are here as well, Merlin and everybody. And I love the fact that you all talk to each other too. This is cool. Joan says hello as well. And so does Marsha and everybody that's watching. If you're watching us live right now, we welcome you. And if you are, and Jane again is here. Um, and those of you who are going to be watching this, we archive all of our episodes on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters T. V. We love it. We love it. We love it. And uh, Carla says, ready to watch Lee uh, on JMS show since Lucille Ball was part of my childhood. Love her. Carla watching from Brazil. We love that. Yes. And, uh, and we love our new theme music. We're keeping our new theme music and we love the open and all the cool things that we have here. So good to have you with us. Thanks everybody. And it's time to welcome our very special guest, again, coming to us from Hudson Valley, New York, which is a beautiful area of, uh, of New York. Lee Tannen is joining us here on the show. And if you are familiar with this book, then you know what I'm talking about. If you are not, well, in 2001, St. Martin's Press published in hardcover Lee's autobiographical memoir, I Loved Lucy. It's a funny and poignant story about his friendship with Lucille Ball and the last decade of her life. It's a very personal look into the life, private life, uh, of arguably the funniest entertainment icon of the 20th century. It's a warts and all portrait of a lady whose public persona is known worldwide. It immediately became a bestseller, and the following year it was published in trade paperback. Lee also narrates the memoir as an audiobook through audible.com. He also adapted I Loved Lucy for stage when it premiered at the Laguna Playhouse. And after extensive rewrites, it premiered in London in 2016 off the West End at the prestigious uh, German Street Theater, where it received critical acclaim and played to sold out houses for 15 weeks. In July 2017, it transferred to the Art Theater in London's West End where it once again received very good reviews and played to packed houses for a seven week run. He's amazing. There's a lot more that he's done, of course, besides this, uh, although this has been a very, very uh, special project for him. We all love Lucy. Uh, the book has so many wonderful uh, photos and things of that nature too that you'll love. So we'll tell you how you can get it as well. But uh, why don't we welcome, live and direct from New York, our very special guest, Lee Tannen, joining us here 
on the Gym Masters Show Live for a Saturday afternoon. Lee, welcome to the show, my friend. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, thank you. I could listen to your voice all day. I didn't even think you'd get around to me today, actually. I thought you'd just say, okay, that's it. Thank that's you very it. much. Thank you, Lee. We loved you. We loved Lucy and we loved Lee. And I was very, <laughs> I'm was i so impressed with everybody around the world watching it. So that's that was fun to see all those people, Brazil and Paris oh, and Kansas yeah. and you know. And Anne in Southern California says, welcome to the family, Lee. And uh, she's in SoCal and Blissful Angel is here. Hello, Jim. Thanks for notifying me. Now I'm in for a relaxing, enjoyable, good time. Hello, Lovity, darlings. Welcome, Lee, to Lovity Hall. You are now a member of our Gym Master Show Lovity Squad. You know, I tell everybody, all the guests, uh, you can get Oscars and Emmys and Peabody's and Tellies and Tonys, uh, Grammys. But when you get a Lovity, on the Jim Masters show live. I mean, I would imagine your feet must be tingling right now, Lee. <laughs> they're actually, they're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to wake them up. And we'll wake You're going to wake them up. I'm going to wake them up. Kathy in uh, Cleveland says, welcome, Lee. It's so nice to have you with us today. This is some of the lovely coming from our viewers, the lovely squad. Juanita's watching in South Africa. She says, welcome to the show, Lee, as well. She's one of our regular uh, lovely viewers and everybody's welcoming. Uh, and says again, hello everyone. Hope you're having a blessed day. Merlin in Canada welcomes you. Welcome Lee to Lovety Hall. You are now a Lovety. Well, there's a lot of love in this theme of this episode with I Loved Lucy. Um, first of all, before, oh, well, Alessandra pops in and she says, thank you, Lee, for joining us. Your new Lovety family. I love that. And uh, Jane goes, how blissful. Very nice. We love it. Thanks, gang, for all this uh, love and keep the comments coming live and afterwards when we archive the show. Um, how are you and how have you been during the crazy time? Obviously, the last 18 months or so has been something a little different, something a little unique that we've all experienced. Time for reflection, time to look at our lives and the things that we want to do going forward. How has it been for you? How have you stayed, as I always ask the guests, uh, connected, creative, collaborative, and sane through it all? And that's usually where the guest says, I'm still working on that part, Jim, the sane part. Yeah, uh, that, that's exactly it. Yeah, I, I, think I, I think I gave up on the sanity. I think I'm, I think I'm pretty insane at this point. Yeah, but, um, but blessed to have a lovely home up here and to have a great partner and to have lots of good friends. And... Um, to actually be out of New York City, and I love New York City, but when I go yeah. into New York City, I get a little, um, a little freaked out now because it's, because um, it's sort of like COVID 2.0. You know, it's, we thought yes. we were done with it. Yes. Masks, you know, like Mary Tyler Moore throws off yeah. her hat. We yes. threw up our masks. That's how I look at it, you know. And then all of a sudden, we had to get them from the ground and pick them up again. Um, so I'm trying to stay grounded and sane, and uh, this is one way to do it: being on a show like yours. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, some of your background before even writing this book. I mean, you have been involved in the arts in, in a very deep way for a long time. What were some of those early inspirations for you, Lee, maybe even growing up that pointed you in the direction to, to go into uh, artistic expression and the way that you have done for years so beautifully? It's a great question. Um, I never mentioned this to anyone before, but it is interesting. When my when I was born, everybody, everybody, all the parents, they always send out like a card, you know, announcing the birth. And the card that my mother sent out was in the shape of a theater ticket, which ah. I thought was very prophetic, actually. <laughs> I mean, so right. I mean, it really was. Like here I was, like you know, twenty seven hours old, and she was already sending out this cute little theater ticket, you know, Bob and Lucille Tannen present their latest production and, you know, excuse if the star is sleeping or something like that. It was really fun. I found it later in my life. Um, so I think I was destined just from, uh, and my mother was sort of like a, a frustrated, but she wasn't a frustrated performer. She performed, but more for community theater and things like that. She didn't really, she wasn't really professional, but she had a great voice and she was funny. And um, so I always, I always was into the arts and I always loved, um, you know, I did shows when I was seven, eight years old. 
I, I remember using the bathroom curtain of the bathtub. You know, you have curtains on your bathtub. Yes. And I remember, I remember being in the bathroom by myself and I would use, and I would pull the curtain aside and I would do whatever, you know, take a bunch of pots and pans and play them. I don't know. I did silly things, but uh, it led me to, uh, to do some fun things. Yeah, I like theater, everyone. Theater, the, theater, adv theater advertising and then writing for people like Shirley MacLaine and Elizabeth Taylor and Joan Rivers writing material. And then uh, and then Lucy came into my life sort of uh, in 1980. So that was uh, for that decade. That was pretty much a Lucy decade. How did that happen? How did you have the uh, were you at a special event or how did the introduction occur for you? I mean, it's a very special friendship that you had with Lucio Ball. Uh, and I know you miss her to this day like we all do, but you had this opportunity to really have a warm and affable friendship with this legend. But what is beautiful about that is you got to see Lucio Ball, the person, as much as the legend and the persona, the television star, the film star, the, the funny lady, you got a chance to really see the person. And that I know for you uh, is pretty close to home for you. How did that all initially happen for you, Lee? Well, Lucy's second husband, Gary Morton, was distantly related to me and my family. Oh. That's so, amazing, right? yeah. So when they got married in 1960, um, I had a chance to meet her the next year. I was 11 years old and I met her and I didn't say one word for two hours. I literally just sat there and stared at her and she would make funny faces at me and tickle me. And I would, I was a mess. And, um, and, that, and after I met her that one night, I said to my mother, I know, I know that I'm going to be friendly with her one day. And it took about 20 years to make that happen. But, uh, what so was your nine, first impression when you when you were there staring at her? Um, and again, you mentioned Gary Morton. There's Gary, and you you have the family relation to Gary, and there's Gary and Lucy in the kitchen there. Um, what was happening to you? I, I could see a similar thing happening to me where you're just like in awe and you're staring, and were you just soaking it all in, just observing, or didn't know what to say, or what was happening to you? Yeah, that's about it. All of that. All of the above. Yeah. Awestruck. Um, can't believe I'm there. Can't believe she's in the family. Can't believe it's the same woman that I watched on television. I've been watching on TV for you know five, six years since I since I was old, since I was old enough to remember there was Lucy for me. Um, so it was very it was very surreal, and and she was very sweet and kind, but it was all a blur. I literally sat there. I sat there, just like, like stared at her as if she was like, like not real, you know. And right, uh, right. so when I came back in 1980, I was still awestruck, and I still stared yeah. at her the first time, a couple of times. But I was yeah. at least grown up. Yeah. <laughs> the how did the um, for those who haven't read the book. Maybe you can take us a little bit through some of it. We don't want to give it all away because we'd love for people to get it and to really, you know, uh, curl up on a couch and soak it all in. But um, how did the friendship then sort of nurture itself and become the friendship that it did? Because, again, you got a chance to see her in, in scenarios that a lot of people don't get really a chance to, to see her and have this, this friendship in such a beautiful way. I mean, it is a great oh shot of the God. two of you. Yeah. Who is that guy on the right? I don't. I have no idea. Who I, he is. I tell you, I don't know. I have uh, no idea who he is. But get that, that picture. Denny, I mean, that I, Denny I Terrio that from uh, Dance Fever? <laughs> I, yeah, I love that. I love that picture. But it really is like somebody else. It's really, like, you know, it's um, it's. A, I love that shot. I, I thank you for putting. There's a lot of levity in that picture, Lee. Yeah, I love that. We took that in. Uh, that was in um, Snowmass, Colorado. She had. A, she had three condominiums there, on, on, and then we went. We would go skiing every year around Easter time, and yeah. then actually that was taken. I remember that was taken at night in the and outside of the Hotel Jerome in Aspen, a beautiful old hotel. And Lucy loved the snow, and she loved the change of seasons, which is yeah. ironic since she lived in a place where the seasons hardly changed in Beverly right. Hills. But she had to for her work. But if she had her druthers, she would be living where I live now, where you have like you know ten feet of snow in the winter and beautiful trees in the fall and um anyway now is that person is that is it 
for all your viewers out there, is there any resemblance between that picture and me? I hope you say yes. I need you to say yes. I need everybody to say yes, yes. There, there yes. is some, there is some can, resemblance between you that. You can 30. see it in the eyes. Oh, that's about it, the eyes. Okay, well, I'll take it. I'll take the eyes, yeah. Yeah, the hair is a little different color. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that, that was, I was about, um, I was about 30, oh my God. That's the last picture we took together. That she, Lucy died, unfortunately, um, about uh, six weeks after that picture that's was taken. Six that was weeks March, after. 1989. I was 39 years old and Lucy was 77, 76, she had 77. just uh, been on the Academy Awards and was with Bob Hope and everybody, right? Yeah, well, that was actually before. That was, she was on with Bob Hope at the end of March. This was the beginning of March. We were going to some black tie event, but that's the last public picture that uh so that's really and that's the last picture that there's a whole bunch of pictures in the book yeah if when you guys read the book and yeah. um it's lovely because in the in the book they're black and white but here you can really see it you can see it in living color and she looks amazing there you both do but you know not who would who would have known because she right. looks so wonderful there. oh my god look look <laughs> you sure i love this i never that's weird that's that's weird that's lee and lucy and lee <laughs> That's, Isn't that funny? It is. That's that's really fun. It's, it's fun. It's actually fun. I like that. Yeah, it, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> so it's like, um, you know, we're talking about this 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 relationship, this friendship that uh, you were able to, you know, the two of you fostered. How do you describe it? What was it like? I mean, there, there's different forms of friendship, but how do you? if you could even categorize this friendship with Lucille Ball, how would you categorize it? Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> Every time I start to speak, I see my life going by. I love the reactions that the guests have to the photos that we show because we don't, you know, go through a list in order. We, we don't tell them in advance. So you get this fabulous, authentic, raw reaction and uh, the wow, like you just did. I love it. That's a great uh, shot. That's a yeah, great. That's that's just a, yeah. That, that's a great. That's a wonderful. I don't even remember who was taking those shots because obviously we didn't have selfies then. You know, although that that looks like that could have been a so. There's there's my hand. Um, great. Oh my God, I love them. Wow. Thank you, Devin May. Oh, this is fun. This Juanita, is fun. Juanita says you don't look a day older. Yeah, he, so, she's right. I look yeah. 35 years older. I don't look a day older. I look 35 years older. Devin May, who was a guest on our show, says hi. I love, I love Lucy. What a legend. Great photos. But uh, what was happening here? Where was this? This uh, is in the this is in uh, the pool house. Um, she had her, the main house and then there was a then then, then there was a pool. If you're if here, the pool was over. Uh, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just sticking with my hands and you can't see me. Um, this, this, was, <laughs> this, was, this was a pool house where she had a backgammon table. Uh, she had a backgammon table in practically every room of the house, but that was the pool house. And it was, it was really a great house. It overlooked the pool and she loved being there, especially in the summer because it was breezy and cool. And, um, these, uh, this is, this is, this is a lot of fun, Jim. This is the most fun I've had in a long time. Oh, I appreciate um, that. There's the picture again. I love that picture. I don't know what she was thinking. And that's lovely. That, well, that's I can tell you that there's a lot of people who, wish their head was on her shoulder <laughs> makes me think of put your head on my shoulder Paul Anka yeah. there uh that's just just a really um and this was late this was later it's interesting because this was most of these shots were later in our relationship there's some i think you might have that very early on but this was i would say that was probably 1987 1988 you know thereabouts yeah. um but yeah so it was uh you asked the original question was what it was uh, it was unique it was it was not like any friendship I had before, and it wasn't like any friendship I've had since. Um, I think I felt most authentic with Lucy, if I can use that word, because Lucy was totally accepting of who I was. Uh, when I met her, I was just coming out as a gay man. Um, she was actually the first person I told, besides the guy that I was with, he kind of got the idea, he, he knew I was gay. Um, but Lucy, I told Lucy before I told my own mother, whose name, by the way, was Lucille. And who also had red hair, so that was kind of uh, that was that, that was fraught with a lot of stuff. But I told Lucy before I told anyone, I was very shy about. And I and I whispered that I was. I was. I remember whispering I was gay. I was afraid to tell. And she finally said, "Jesus, speak up! What are you talking about?" And I said, "Oh, I'm gay." 
And she said, I remember it verbatim. She said, well, why the hell didn't you just say so in the first place? Right. <laughs> and, and that was the beginning of a beautiful friendship, as, as, as Ingrid Bergman and Humphrey Bogart attest to, you know, in Casablanca. That is funny. Straight shooter and said, hey, just, you know. Yeah, goes, just, and, yeah, I mean, she was used to being with gay people for, you know, probably half the crew on I Love Lucy was, or three quarters of the crew were gay throughout her years on television. Um, she was totally, totally um, accepting of me, totally. And so I was able to really be who I was which I wasn't for such a long time in my life. So can you imagine? So we, we, we both kind of saved each other is how I look at it. She was going into a period where she was not working anymore and, and she was kind of looking for what to do, backgammon she found. And we found each other at a time. Yeah, that's what I like to say now. Because people ask me that all the time. You yeah. know, what was it like? You asked me sort of that question. It's sort of like we saved each other in a positive way. I mean, I don't mean we weren't pathetic people, you know, by any means, but we saved each other. She was still, I think, reeling also from uh, the life with Lucy not taking off. Well, that, yeah, well, that, was, that, was la that was later yeah. on. That yeah. was later on. Like that was in yeah. yeah. But in 80, she wasn't working anymore. She had stopped working and working was everything to her. So she was looking and she wasn't the type that would lunch with all the ladies and things like that. So she wound up playing backgammon. Yeah, which and, surprises some people too. I knew that about her. And some people would figure, you know, being this beloved uh, Hollywood icon that she was always at all of these uh, party celebrations, backyard pool events, all these things that happen in LA and Hollywood. But she was very much uh, home and hearth, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, she hated that stuff. I mean, she had to do some of it, but oh, Jesus Christ, do I really have to go out? You know, <laughs> we, 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 yeah, we, we get, we got invited to a lot of places. I got invited with her. She got invited by herself, but they were all to celebrity functions and things. And I was, oh, Lucy, please, let's go. Can't we get out of here once we, you know, you called the Lovities. I was like the prisoner of paradise. That's what I called myself there in Beverly Hills. I was so we. I never went out the house. Never ever. She let me go out once in a while for breakfast, but I was I was I was stuck there. <laughs> I mean, it was a great place to be a prisoner. But what you know, initially brought you out there? Uh, she demanded I come out. I mean, I lived in I lived in New York. I worked in New York. But when we met in Beverly Hills, she came to New York right after that in 1980, and and we with her then, and then she went back home. And she just said, you have to come out and see me a lot. You have to come out. Well, if Lucille Ball asked you to come out, what do you say? And no, I'm going, gonna say, I'm going uh, to movies this week. the next flight? Uh yeah, exa <laughs> exa that's exactly, that's, ex that's exactly what I said. When was the next flight? And I'd wind up staying longer than I was supposed to stay. And, but Tom would stay, hang back a lot. My partner, Tom, who, who Lucy met and fell in love with, he was sort of like hold down the fort in New York. But I would spend a lot of time with her. And he did too, but I spent a, a great deal of time with her in those last nine, ten years. So you were a source of uh, comfort for one another, it seems, uh, in, in many beautiful, beautiful ways, huh? Oh, God. Now, that that's Tom on my right. That's well, a cool shot. Um, yeah, that, that was in Palm Springs. That was the last New Year's Eve we celebrated together. So that would have been December 31st, 1988. And she died four months later. And we were... We were playing this funny game with money. I forgot what it was. And we had these crazy little things on our heads. And um, yeah, it's, it's very touching to see pictures like this because she was happy. She was happy that night. There were a lot of times in those years, ever since Desi died in 1986 and her show, her show failed, that she wasn't happy. But she was very happy that particular night. And I think it shows on her face. And, Did um, it seem more um, in a way... Like she was a relative, like she was an aunt, or did it feel sort of familial in a way too? I mean, a wonderful friendship, but did it feel deeper than just, hey, oh, sure, you, know, sure. you know, how are you yeah, type thing? Sure. Oh, and yeah. Well, it, there was a real arc to it because when I first met her, like I said, I was very starstruck still. And even though I was 30 years old, I was awe not starstruck. I was really aw awestruck. Yeah. Um, so it was, you know, but as as the years went on, it, it, you know, you become less awestruck because then she then she's not Lucille Ball. She's Lucille Ball when she goes out and puts on the wig and the makeup. But when she's home playing backgammon, she's Lucy and sort of like my surrogate mother you know she was just she was like she was we were like mother and son by the end except without that mother son baggage because she wasn't real my real mother and i wasn't her real son so we had the best of, of of all worlds and by the end 
Yeah, by the end, you know, by the end, can I say pain in the ass? Well, I just said pain in the ass, so I guess I can say it. it. Yeah, there you go. There's no delay here, I guess, so I have to watch what I say. Um, <laughs> but by the end, you know, she could be a pain in the ass, and I'm sure I was a pain in the ass to her. And we had, well, we had one very big squabble, which I don't want to give away too much because it's in the book. But it's we in had, the book. We yeah. had one time that it was, uh, I think I overstepped my boundary, if, if you will. But, um, but after that estrangement for a little bit, we actually became closer. So the last three, four years, were very we were very inseparable and um yeah i miss her to this day you know I, I, yeah and a matter of fact just oh there yeah that's the um that's when she was getting giving the getting the kennedy center award the kennedy oh, center on a very special in, night in 1986 yeah and that was right after desi died. that was five years after five days after desi died five days and nine days after her show was canceled so can you imagine her show gets canceled on a thursday Jesse dies guess. the next Tuesday, and then yeah. that Sunday she gets the Kennedy Center honor. So that was a very, that was a tough time, and I was with her then. Yeah. And um, yeah. Yeah, she looked, she looked beautiful. See, there she was all dolled up. She was, had the wig on and yeah. and all that. But so it was, it was hard to decipher which Lucy I was really with sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that, and see, and there's the other Lucy with no makeup and no hair and cooking in the kitchen with Gary. So it was a really, that's a great transition you guys did with seeing the two different Lucy's. Well, she mentioned, you know, that uh, she had always wanted, you know, the, the, the warm, loving home atmosphere. Absolutely. And uh, that was Tinker, by the way, we're looking at Tinker. Oh yeah. Tinker. She Judy. had, four, she had four dogs and she named them all Tinker. I never heard of anybody doing that. I would, she called them Tinker one, two, three, and four. She named all, <laughs> no, they were all white poodles. I, it, it was weird. I mean, you know, people, everybody knows people who have lots of dogs, right? But you have a dog, you name the dog one thing, then the dog dies, you get another dog, you name it something else. She named them all Tinkers. I think that was Tinker three or Tinker four. The only one that did that, but did it with the sons was uh, George Foreman, George and George Jr. and George two and George well, there you three. Go. Yeah. They're all I mean, Georges. She, <laughs> yeah. I mean, she named her kids Lucy and Desi, but, 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 yes. her, but her dogs, they were all t uh, Tinker. That's, that's Lucy and me. And that's Palm Springs. That's on, she was on a, she had a beautiful house right on the golf course on Thunderbird golf course. And, um, you know, it's interesting, these photos that I'm looking at, I, and, and they're great that you're putting them up. She always was sort of like camera shy, not there. There she, that's the, that's the, that's, that's the cover. Can I show this? Yes. I, there we go. This is, that's the, that's the, that's the cover shot. And uh, that one is in color. And that, that was taken outside of the guest house. So we were talking earlier about the pool house. The, uh, the, the the building there on I don't know right or left I get mixed up on television whatever camera right or camera left but the, that's that's the guest house that's where I stayed when I came out and um, and she has a drink in her hand that's really a margarita but she wasn't supposed to drink booze so she called it a slushy because she said it reminded her of New York slush but it was really a margarita tequila and triple sec and crushed ice and um that was her that was her drink of choice i love that shot i was going to say most shots she was kind of turned to the side but that was a great that was a great photo that was a great photo that really really is um there there it is really really fantastic absolutely yeah. and then and, and also this one too uh um, yeah yeah you can see the friendship there and then and i love this too i love lucy another yeah, one there. that was a piece of art that we did for for uh what? The, the show for the show and we'll talk about the show in just a second but the it, it's sort of an autobiographical memoir as 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 much as it is you know celebrating lucio ball as well um what inspired you to put pen to paper lee and say you know i really want to tell this story i really want to share this with the world i hope it maybe it inspires other people they find the entertainment entertaining part of it you know warts and all and the, the funny moments poignant moments but i really for those who have loved this person and who you know enjoy your work uh all coming together in this book what was the inspiration for writing the book Interesting question. There really, there wasn't an inspiration for writing the book. There was an inspiration for just jotting down these things because I was turning fifty, and um, I was I wasn't losing my memory. But I, there were things that everybody would ask, "What was it like? What was it like? What was it like?" And I thought, you know, it would be nice just to write 
uh, my memoirs that write, write things down like a, like journaling it, like for a diary. Except I was diarying it in in two thousand in two in, two, in two thousand one as opposed to doing it as we went along. So I wrote. I would get up early in the morning and I would sit at my computer and I would just write a few pages and I'd show them to Tom, my partner. And after I wrote about fifty pages, and they were not linear, they were not in any order. They were just like you know, oh, and then we did this, and then we did that. But this could have been nineteen eighty three, and that could have been nineteen eighty nine. Um, he said, "I think you have a book here." And I said, "Tom, who would want to read a book by a totally unknown person? Me." And he said, "Well, that's true, except you're writing about the most famous woman in the world." So I wrote more, and I wrote more, and I wrote more, and I happened to be doing some freelance writing. Um, for an advertising agency, and the woman who ran the agency, her boyfriend was uh, an agent, a, a literary agent, and I gave him the the work. And uh, we had a house in Hawaii at the time, and we went to Hawaii. And I think within eight or nine days, he had sold it to St. Martin's Press. Um, so I, it was never intended to be a book, to be honest. It was, you know, I was thrilled, and I'm still thrilled to this day because people are still buying it. I'm very grateful they are. But it was never meant to be a book. It was really meant to be uh, just a lot of remembrances put down on paper, so that I would remember what things were like back then. And now it's wonderful because now it's sort of like my Bible, you know. But I, but I remember when I was chatting with you, you would ask me certain things, and I said, "Oh, I don't know," and I'd have to look. Oh, let me look at page two seventy two. I would look it up, you know, and say, "Oh, yeah, that really happened." Mm -hmm. So th that's how it that that's how it, it came. It was an accidental book, if you will. And it was published on 9-11, 2001, 20 years ago today. So it's very prophetic that we're both here today. With you and I talked around about the world. Yeah. when we were talking about the date to have you come on as my special guest, that the fact that it is on this date is just makes it even deeper. Because yeah. we are talking about love and empathy and kindness and friendship and how we all need one another and got to care for one another. And that's so important. So very ironic and poignant that uh, you're here with us on this special day, huh? Yeah, yeah. it was, it, books are just for people who may not know this, uh, and most people don't, but, and I didn't know this until I was involved in publishing it, that books always come out on a Tuesday. They're always published on a Tuesday. I have no idea why that is. You know, movies seem to come out on Actually, Wednesday or Friday. Yeah. Had, yeah. Yeah, every book is comes out on Tuesday. The, um, I don't know, the publishing world must have some reason for it. But anyway, 9-11, 2001 was a Tuesday and I was very excited because the book was coming out and it was coming into all the stores and I had told a lot of friends about it and uh, and then the world sort of fell apart and uh, it was um, it was quite a day I mean so you can imagine besides the horror of what happened that day I had to kind of go through my own realization that in perspective my book was good but it would have to wait a bit, you know, so it did. And, uh, but it, I was very glad that, that it became a bestseller anyway, because people needed to laugh and there's a lots of laughs in the book. Yeah. So it was a nice time to, you know, it came out that day. I don't think anybody bought it probably till October, but, uh, it was nice that people were able to find some laughter. And I felt good about that. Which is absolutely beautifully. What would be uh, maybe one story that you could share from the book that mm -hmm. people would get a kick out of? Well, the one that comes to mind, because it's first, let me say to everybody who's watching, and again, how much I appreciate everybody watching and saying such lovely things. Um, everything in the book is true because everything happened while I was there. There is no, there is no hearsay in the book. There are many, many books written about Lucy, tons of books written about Lucy, but that 99% of them have been written by people who never even met Lucy, you know, as many biographies are. They're biographies. Mine is an autobiographical memoir. I love how you said that. I never, I'm going to, I'm stealing that from you because I never used that before. An autobiographical memoir, and that's what it is. So the, the stories are all true. I mean, they're not even dramatized like one would do for a play or a movie. I just told it like it is. When I when I when I had monologues, they were almost I remembered them from Lucy's mouth. Anyway, this story is about taking her to the movies. The one and only time I took her to the movies in New York. Lucy never went to the movies in in probably 20 30 years because she had a wonderful screening room at home in Beverly Hills and the screen would come down and the projectionist would come in and they would show movies. That's a lovely perk of being rich and famous. Um 
I, on the contrary, I, on the, on the other hand, never did that before. I only went to the movies. So she decided that it would be a good idea for her and me to go to the movies. So instead of playing backgammon, we walked on a very cold day down about 12 blocks on Third Avenue in New York City to a movie theater called the Cinema One. Mm -hmm. And there was playing Terms of Endearment with Shirley mm -hmm. MacLaine, who she loved, and Deborah Winger. And she wanted to see that movie, and she had to see it in a movie theater. So as we were walking down, I asked her when the last time she was in a movie theater, and she said, well, how the hell should I know? And then she realized that she, <laughs> that she said it was probably when they had the premiere of MAME, which was in 1974, the movie she did. So we're talking about like a good 10, 12 years, you know, since she was at the movies. So we got there, and the manager, it was very, very cold, and he saw who it was, and he said he would love to have us come right in. Because at that time, there were very long lines. It wasn't like today where you get a ticket and you go in. You had to wait online for tickets. So the manager said, please, Miss Ball and person with her, um, come in whenever you want. And she said, no, 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 I want to wait online like everybody else. So she waited online like everybody else freezing my ass off for about 35, 40 minutes. She was talking to everybody because everybody recognized her with a white lynx coat and her red hair and you know you couldn't miss her, but she just wanted to be online with everybody else. And then we got in the theater. She wanted to sit in the balcony, not in the orchestra. She wanted to sit in the balcony. She wanted to sit in the middle of the row. She wanted to be regular, but right. Lucy couldn't really be regular because she was Lucille Ball. So everybody, so what she decided though was she didn't realize she was in a movie theater with a couple hundred people, so she just started talking. Yeah. She would talk all through the, the movie. She didn't know what coming attractions were. She had no <laughs> idea what they were. She said, what the hell is this? I had to explain what that, but loud. And then during the movie, she would take out her compact and it had chaser lights around it and she would put on her lipstick in the middle of the movie. Yeah. And Deborah Winger is dying at the end and she's putting on her makeup and people really got crazy. These kids in back of us started throwing popcorn. They didn't care who it was. I mean, she was... It was outrageous. I mean, it was just, it was like, we never did that again. Never, but then it was, so that, that was the day at the movies with Lucy. It was absolutely true. And there's a lot more to that story, but those are the highlights of what she did in wow. the movie theater. Wow. What yeah. was, um, what would you say is something that uh, perhaps maybe surprised you? Um, you knew her again through television and movies. And here again, you have an opportunity to, forge a wonderful friendship with her, what would be something that maybe um, the public would have been surprised about? Maybe the fact that she, again, um, liked Home and Hearth. Some people would assume, I always knew that about her, of course, but uh, maybe some people would have assumed that she would be at all these gala events and parties and all these things. But what would be something maybe that you uh, noticed that would uh, be of interest to the audience? Oh, she was a terrible cook. <laughs> she was a terrible cook. Did she, she have a specialty? Burning, burning franks and beans. Burning <laughs> franks and beans. She she always kept them on too long because she forgot that they were on the stove and we'd be playing backgammon. So she she wasn't she wasn't a good cook. Um, she did crazy things like, and I think it's in the book. We I was on the phone with her once and um she was running bath water to take a bath and the bath overflowed and she said oh my god the bath is overflowing and she went for her dust buster to try to to try to soak up the water with a dust buster and i was on the other end of the line i said lucy you're going to electrocute yourself you must stop immediately and turn off that dust buster um she she I think what people don't realize about is just how regular she was you mentioned home and hearth that's absolutely true family was so important to her uh, she was really, really, really regular. She yeah. wanted to be regular and she really was regular when she was at home because she could be. When she went out, it was very hard for her to be regular because she was Lucille Ball, like at the time at the movies. But at home, she was Lucy and um, she was she was very regular. That's, yeah, that's always what I had heard as well. And um, the response to the book, what has been over the years, the response to the book itself from super fans, from, from, you know, the community at large. I, I still get, I still get fan mail and I'm really touched by it. And everyone, just about everybody talks about that. They love the book so much because you really felt like you were a fly on the wall. Like you were really, in her living room or in her den or in the hotel room with her that i was able to paint this portrait of her so honestly and truthfully that made me really happy because um 
there is there is movie interest now, and hopefully we'll have a film uh, based on the book uh, coming out. Well, who knows? With film, it takes a long time, but hopefully next year or the year after, we're, we're talking to writers now, and we're talking to, to other people. But uh, I, I want to make this film, I want to be a part of it in terms of being executive producer and, and have a say in it, because I want to give people a chance on film to capture the real Lucy that I knew, not the myths that people think of. And I wanted to preserve her legend, her, her legacy. And um, so I'm hoping that the movie will, will be a, a nice continuation of the book and the play. And that's the other thing too, a great entree to uh, the play itself. This actually became, I mentioned in sort of that little introduction, this actually became a play, which I think was very cool. Tell us about that, uh, Lee, how did that happen? Well, again, almost like the book, I had no intention of it becoming a book. I certainly had no intention of becoming a play, but I was uh, approached by a couple of producers and, and, and Laguna Playhouse in California. And they said to me, um, is there a play here? And I said, oh yeah, 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 I'm working on one. I had no, I wasn't working on one at all, but if they're asking me if there's a play, of course I'm gonna say yes. And so <laughs> the, the play came pretty easily. The play is a two-hander, meaning two characters only uh, for many reasons, because of budget purposes and because you can't, you can't, you can't create what I just talked about in terms of you know going to the movies and things like that. So you have to pick and choose. And so you pick and choose wisely and then you have it around a backgammon table because that's where Lucy and I spent much of our time. Yeah. And we had this incredible actress named Sandra Dickinson who's an American actress but living in London for the last 50 years who looks nothing, nothing, nothing like Lucy. But you put on the red wig and the glasses and she's a, she was amazing. She channeled Lucy because you can't imitate Lucy, you cannot, she's inimitable, yeah. but you can channel her. And a wonderful actor named Matthew Scott, Matt Scott, who's American from New York, who we flew over to London, who was terrific as me. Um, that's actually from the first production that we did in Laguna, that, that's a, an actress named Diane Finley and a, an actor named Jeffrey Denman. And that was our director, Todd Weeks, and that was our set in California. It was fun in California. I just felt after watching it that I wanted to do some rewrites. And when you start to do rewrites, you keep on rewriting and rewriting and rewriting and the years go by. And it took about five years to get it, six years to get it where I wanted to get. And we decided to go to London and give it a shot there because they know her there. And London is a lovely, lovely place to, to, to do theater and to make art. So um, it went from Laguna to London we did a little mini tour in the Hudson Valley where I played myself, which was really interesting and kind of worked well. Um, and now, like I said, the next stop hopefully will be uh, a film. I think, I don't know how many of you people know who Gene Smart is, but I think, oh, Gene, sure, yeah. I think Gene Smart would be an incredible Lucy. They would um, know her from Designing Women. Designing CBS. Women, yeah. and she has a new series called Hacks, and she was in Mayor of Easttown. She's very, very hot now, and I'm, she has a lot of things going on, and, but we're hoping that she will read the material and see how much alike she is to Lucy, which she really, really is. So, And we're looking for screenwriters and directors, doing all the things you need. The movies are a whole different whole different animal. That was, a, that was the... the photograph we're looking at now is the photograph that was used at her memorial. It was taken by the late photographer, Mark Raboy, who was a very, very famous portrait photographer in New York. Um, and he shot that in about 1986. Uh, and um, it's a great, it shows a great side of Lucy, you know, that, yeah. that kind of big laugh. And, and we used that at the memorial service. We did a memorial about three weeks after she died. And um, we used that picture there. Well, you have, my God, you do your homework. You have everything. Thank you very much. Journalist I'm, at large. <laughs> I really, I'm, I'm going to make sure you pay the, for the rights of these things. Now just uh, spread the word about our show and buy me a cup of coffee and we're even. <laughs> oh, I was thinking just the opposite. You need to pay me for using it. These are all cop. There's a little copyright CC there. That is a great, that is a oil painting that I have about 
30 feet away from here, which I was thinking about. How would I show it here? But I'm not touching oh, you my have, You have it right there in the room? Wow. I have it um, right in, in, in the other room there. And I was oh, thinking, how, I was thinking, how do I do that? But I said, I'm not touching my computer because you know I'm, I told you I'm uh, technically. Yes, you so had. I'm, I'm uh, not touching everything. You had your but, associate producer help you today. Oh, yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> but that that's fantastic. That Who did was, this? Uh, we'll give them, obviously, some credit. Um, Who did this? I Got his name, but originally, originally, Eli Elliot is signed Elliot. I don't know who he is, but originally this was going to be used in the movie of Mame, but they 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 took it out and they used. I don't know if you know the film, remember the film, but yeah, top of sure. the long stairway, there's a shot of her as a bullfighter. Oh yeah, and they used that shot instead. This was put in storage. I never knew about this. This arrived at my door on November tenth, nineteen eighty eight, the last birthday that Lucy was alive for. I, I couldn't believe it. She gave me this this painting, and to, to this day, it yeah. hangs, you know, in my house. Sherry it's, Larson it, loves it in Kansas. She says it's gorgeous. Uh, thank you, Sherry. It yeah. is, and it's very meaningful, and um, it's big. It's life size, and uh, I love it. I love it. I, I the room that you're in, that wall behind you. We sometimes we do with our guests a little of that Edward R. Murrow, you know, sort of person to person. Now we're coming to you from the home of Lee Tannen in New York. That wall behind you. Tell us about the room you're in. That wall is stunning. Uh, it, it, it's a screen. It's an eight-panel screen. My partner Tom's dad was a, an interior designer and traveled the world finding things, and he found that in Asia, somewhere in Asia, and. Um, uh, when he passed away, uh, Tom got that, and we have it. Uh, it, it it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's usually these screens are, f are freestanding, and they're like you could see the, the you see the um, the the uh, the seams in them. They're usually freestanding, and they're folded in and out. This is lying flat against the wall, propped up against the wall, and it's. Um, I call it the Rachel Maddow screen only because I, now I should call it the Jim Master screen. But I call it if Rachel Maddow ever called me for an interview. I would. Uh, you got I, Maddow I, and Masters. And Maddow, Maddow. Well, yeah, Masters and Matt. You better take top billing. Masters and Maddow. I'm a gentleman. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but that, I do. I call it that. I will call it the. I will call it the master screen now because it's just it's it's beautiful. It's funny. A friend of mine, Jason Gra, who I know you know and interviewed, who really is speaks so uh, highly. You of were you. just on the phone with Jason. I was uh, and he for said the audience's did. edification. Uh, he was chatting. You know, Jason Gra, who was on our show. We had an epic conversation. A lot of laughs with uh, with him. You were just chatting with him moments ago, right? Yeah. And he said to me, he said. Because he said you, when you did his show, I think he did it from his office, and there were some awards around and things. Yes. He, he said, but no, he said, Lee, you've got to do this from from the living room because Jim is going to ask you about that screen, the room that you're in. And, and there you go, fifty three minutes in, and you're asking me about the screen. It's and what what's you. next to you on the right of you? Is that a pillow or something? Oh, there's lots of pillows. Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, there's there's lots of pillows here because um, the the. the the sofa is very deep and I don't want to sit with my back for an hour, an hour and a half. So I'm But there's of, something to the right of you. Oh, is it a pillow or a throw to the right? Oh, there, it, yeah. oh it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a blanket. It's just a throw. It's just, a, it's just a throw, you know, just very nice. I thank mean, you. you look thank like you. you're in a castle. It's very, uh, <laughs> apropos. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a nice house. It's, it's a fun house. And yeah, uh, but I, I do, this is, the screen looks great. It's a great, it's a great time of day we're doing this because the light is, the light makes the light makes me look somewhat younger. You're supposed to say yes, yeah. Everyone's supposed Absolutely. to agree. I want to see those remarks. He looks yeah, great. He wants the, uh, bring in the younger remarks. Bring uh, in the younger remarks. Toby, I, I, Toby in Encino, California says we love, we love seeing, seeing your, your living room. room. Thank you. But Fantastic. what about me, Toby? What about me? <laughs> Fantastic screen. But what about me? What about me? I need validation. Love the screen. Okay, it's we a yeah. tough crowd. Tough crowd. You got to well, earn your. You got to earn your lovety key. It's like. You gotta, it's, uh, Love my screen. Love me. Love, you know, love it. Love the painting. <laughs> Thank you. Great photos. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's fun. What you do, you do. A, you, this is a fun, fun show. This is a great show. I really I mean it. That. I've done a lot of these and it's, it's, um, you're the real deal. I appreciate that. Um, I, I had similar words said to me by somebody that you know, remember as well, who was a guest. And I actually, we went up 4th of July weekend to visit him. He's got a terrific new venue, small little venue called Club Sandwich. And it's in Sandwich, New Hampshire. And it's John Davidson. Of course, you know John from everything. I can't believe really. you're saying that. We were just talking about him last night. Were you I really? Swear, yeah, at a dinner party two nights ago, John Davidson. 
Tom had Tom had a well, he'll kill, kill me for saying that. He had a crush on John Davidson. He says when he was eight years old, but it was, it was last year. <laughs> John Davidson with the, the sweaters he wore and the beautiful blonde hair. And yeah, he's, uh, 80, he's 80 years old now. He's 80. And we were, were we went up for the weekend, uh, staying up in New Hampshire. And it's up towards, you know, uh, North Conway. And it's a beautiful area of New Hampshire. We went to the top of Mount Washington, sightseeing a lot of things. But one of the things I told John after he was a guest on the show, and, he really loved it. And he, he said some wonderful things just about the way I do it and my background. And because as you, you and I were chatting, I do this work professionally in television and radio um, for years. And as somebody himself who was a television talk show host in Hollywood Squares and Hundred Thousand Dollar Pyramid, and that's incredible and, and Broadway and stage. And we even saw him on a couple of nights ago, Decades was having a binge weekend of Love American Style. Remember that series? Sure. And he was on several episodes of that. But he was just acknowledging uh, the way I do what I do and uh, the warmth maybe or what have you. And he posted several things on the Facebook page about it. And he's still been talking about the conversation we had. And I really appreciate that. So thanks for the for those kind words. And to make you feel good, Lee, Juanita in South Africa says, you make the screen look good. Ah, oh, I love Juanita in South Africa. <laughs> Christine Clifton in North Carolina says, Lee, these are fantastic stories or fascinating stories of your many experiences with Lucy over many years. Thanks for sharing them with us. And uh, of course, in your book as well, Merlin in Ontario says, we love you, oh, Lee. You see, there you Mer go. Merlin, Merlin has to chime in a lot more often. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hooked on gym shows. I'm hooked on gym shows. I, you, you got a new, what am I, what am I called? A lo Lovity. A Lovity. A Lovity Lee. Lovity Lee. Lovity, Lovity Lee. Lee. Like, exactly. Makes, yeah. Making lots of new friends here. I love that. This is really yeah. terrific. Yeah. I, I know it was, uh, I knew you would enjoy yourself and you'd have a good time and be warmly uh, welcomed. That's the only way. That's my style. It's the only way we do it here on the show. This oh. is the, this is the Hasting Puddings up in hey, Harvard, hasty, right? This is Hasty Pudding Club. Hasty Pudding Club is the oldest theatrical club in the United States. It's yeah. part of Harvard University. Harvard, right. And if you notice, all the guys are in drag. So that's the idea of Hasty Pudding. All the guys put on shows every year, and they're all in drag. And there she and is the, on the left. And yeah. the shows are really terrific. They're written by they're written by students who go on to be professional writers, lyricists, composers, and every year they do it. And then they have something called the woman of the year and they have a parade and that's part of the parade around Harvard square. And in 1988, we got Lucy Tom as a Harvard graduate. So we finagled Harvard. We didn't have to finagle. They've been asking Lucy for years to be yeah. one of the year. Finally in 1988, she said yes. And this picture is, I think she's just admiring either her scarf or so I think she's, I don't know what she's doing. probably her scarf. She's admiring her scarf. She's wearing a Lynx coat. It was the, it was so cold. It was Valentine's day. I think it was about 20 degrees and it was the biggest parade in the history of the hasty pudding woman of the year. And they've wow. been doing it since like the 1950s. It was an incredible, she had an incredible time. She loves young people. She loves yes. education because she never had much formal education. Uh, it was a great, great day, great day. And she take and they have something called hasty pudding and everybody must remember vitamin to vegemin, right? Yes. Everybody. Um, and so, you know, when she makes all those faces, when she drinks it, well, she did that. There might be a picture. I don't know if you have a picture of, of, of her, maybe not. There's a, there, it was a wonderful evening where there was a dinner and then she was awarded the hasty pudding pot. Wow. It's a pot. And, and, in, and in it, they make her drink this hasty pudding, which is really apple pectin mm -hmm. or whatever. But she made all those incredible Lucy faces that she did. Isn't that a beautiful shot? There, that really again, is. She looks so happy. That's, that, it's, it, that's in Boston? That's on Cambridge. Yeah. She's, Cambridge, in open, yeah. she's in an open car. That's an open car. And you can yeah. see everybody just around her and, uh, it was amazing. It was an amazing day. Just very, very memorable. And so glad that we were able to do it. Because again, she she died about 15 months. This was February 1988. And she died in April of 1989. Uh, so it's any time that we could give her happiness, that I could give her happiness, I felt so blessed and honored to do that for all the happiness that she's given us for all these years. Would you say of all the people that you've had an opportunity to meet in your life, she is the one that uh, reigns, you know, not I'm talking about family and friends and all, but in terms of somebody that maybe you've always wanted to meet or, or learn more about or that you've always respected and admired, 
is she the tops of the tops for you? And you know, you, you started saying something and then you, you, you hesitated and took it back, but you were absolutely right the first time. No, include family and friends. Include family. Uh, yes. Absolutely. And again, I go back to using the word authentic. I, I mean, I suppose Tom, who I'm with for 41 years, is probably at the top of the heap, but, yeah. but that's a special kind of thing. But in terms of uh, um, remembering and, and, and loving and in my heart and in my soul, um, she, she, she's the one. And it, it's, it's not just because she's a celebrity or a legend because of who she was. She is missed by me every single day. There's not a day goes by I don't think of her. And she truly, truly is a guardian angel. You know, guardian angels by the very term have to be dead. Many people just use the word, oh, he's my guardian angel, she's my guardian angel. But to be a guardian angel, you have to be dead. Lucy is truly my guardian angel through bad times and good times. You know, she's responsible for me being here today. I really believe that. And I'm not kind of Shirley MacLaine, woo woo, kind of, you know, nine lives. But I think that Lucy is responsible for everything that's happened to me since I've met her. Mm, what a statement. That's absolutely incredible, Lee. And uh, never had a chance to meet Lucy, but in my work over the years on television, radio, PBS, and elsewhere, there's been a number of folks uh, that I've been blessed to be able to meet, not just in interviews, but just uh, have wonderful conversations with. And um, somebody for me that was a very close friend of Lucy that I had an opportunity to to know and uh, meet, uh, there's actually two. One is Florence Henderson, who unfortunately passed as well. And the second being the incredible Carol Burnett, who just like Lucio Ball, real deal, warm, affable, funny, approachable, authentic. Uh, and I've said it multiple times in this series and elsewhere, I've said, you know, if you ever, ever wonder about Carol Burnett, is she like what everybody says? Absolutely. Um, and, and they had a wonderful friendship, Carol, and respect for one another, Carol and Lucy, right? Yeah. Lu Lucy, Lucy died on her birthday, on Carol Burnett's birthday. Yes, that's right. And um, here's a poignant story is that Lucy um, would send uh, um, flowers to Carol Burnett every year on her birthday. I mean, Lucy, Wanda, Lucy's beloved secretary would do it, but it was obviously from Lucy. And um, the flowers came on April 26th, about five hours after Lucy died. Lucy died about 5.30 in the morning, California time. And the flowers that Lucy had pre-ordered, because everybody thought Lucy was going to be okay, he was doing better um, before it took a turn. Uh, the flowers came that, that day. But yeah, Lucy and Carol Burnett, they worked together. They loved each other. Uh, it was a very, very emotional thing for Carol to lose Lucy. Yes, absolutely. I want to let people know as well that um, there was a stage adaptation of the classic children's story, Dr. Doolittle, that you were involved in as well. Tell us about some of the other work. I know the emphasis is the I Loved Lucy book, but you, you know, you've been involved in so many incredible things over the years. Tell us about some of the other projects people might recognize well, I worked a lot with Tommy Toon for the, over yeah. the course of 20 years. He's, of course, you know, brilliant choreographer, yes. director, performer, won 10 Tony Awards. Uh, we did a couple of things. Most notably, there was a, a reworking of Dr. Doolittle, uh, which I was fortunate enough to, to provide a new book for, a new libretto. And uh, we toured that around the country. Tommy Toon starred as Dr. Doolittle. And uh, that was a wonderful, wonderful experience. We got a chance to play about 35 cities. Um, another terrific thing I did with Tommy that I'm so, I really have been so blessed to have worked with him. We did a, uh, um, a show on a ship, Holland America line was, was ushering in a new ship called the Westerdam. And, um, we produced the show and Tommy was sort of like on film on the, in the show, but we were able to rehearse in Venice, Venice, Italy, right outside of Venice. Cause that's where they were building the ship. So we were actually rehearsing they would build the ship from eight o'clock in the morning till three o'clock in the afternoon. And then we would start rehearsing the show on the ship at three o'clock in the afternoon till 10, 11 o'clock at night, and then go to dinner. And Venice is, I, I don't know how many of your viewers had the opportunity to, to see think, Venice, but Venice yeah. is just magnificent. So I had a chance to do that for a few weeks and then have a 17 day cruise with Tommy and a bunch of people 
because we were performing and he was talking about the, the, the show on the ship. Um, I got a chance to work with Elizabeth Taylor and, and Shirley MacLaine both in 1989, just a few months before Lucy died. I was fortunate enough to, Shirley MacLaine was, uh, was writing all these kind of books about her, you know, endless lives and whatever. And I did, a, I was doing a TV commercial about one of those books. And so I was out in California with her. Elizabeth Taylor was introducing a new perfume and cologne called Passion and Passion for That's Men. Right back in 1988, 89. And I was fortunate enough to be able to work on commercials for that. So at the beginning of 1989, I was out in California, this is true. And in the morning I would go to Shirley MacLaine's house in Malibu and work with her there because she wanted to film this commercial in Malibu because she had this fabulous ocean view. And we would do that for the first few hours. And then I would go to a studio in California in Los Angeles where we would shoot Liz Taylor's commercials for passion. And then I would go home where my home was at that point, Lucy's house in Beverly Hills. So I went from Shirley MacLaine to Elizabeth Taylor to Lucy. It was like I a said. trifecta is what that yeah, is. I said, I think in the book and the play, it was like dying and going to gay icon heaven. It was just like, you know, it was, it was, uh, that was truly, I, th again. Barbara Streisand wasn't after that? <laughs> no, I, I I decided to kill Babs. I couldn't take going with it. It was too much in one day. No, but it was now, now to show you how regular though Lucy was, I would come into Lucy's house probably about eight or eight thirty at night after a full day. And if she had guests there or whatever, if some people in for dinner or whatever, she had to know everything about the day. What was Elizabeth wearing? How much was she eating? Did Shirley MacLaine curse? Because Shirley MacLaine would curse a lot. She needed to know everything that was going on, like like as if she were a regular person. And I was telling her about celebrities that I had met that day. And here I am with the most famous of them all. So that that was another, that's a very telling thing about Lucy. She just loved, she loved little gossipy things and she loved to know what was going on, you know, with everybody else. I uh, just want to show you a few things that might also make you feel good on a Saturday. Uh, Thank you very much, Marsha Watson. Jim, you're great. Uh, Marsha also says, Lee, you are phenomenally handsome oh, and young looking. Oh, Marsha. Need um, I go on? Yes, yes. You, 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 <laughs> yes, you do need to go on. Yes, you do. And you need to come visit me and do this. I, and do this daily. Yes, I, I often Thank tell you. the the viewers when they say nice comments. Uh, I, you know, is there any way we can print these out and I can put them on highway billboards? That would be. My father has always said. Um, he always he he says um, whenever anybody says something nice to you, please ask them to put it in writing and address it management. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Now, did you grow up in uh, in the city? I was born in, in Manhattan. In I was Manhattan, born in Manhattan, yeah. and I went. I grew up in the Bronx, which is a, 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 one of the boroughs: Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Staten Island, um, Bro Brooklyn, Queens. Staten, you know, five boroughs. I grew up in the Bronx. And now I you're went to in college the, in the Bronx, and now yeah. I'm in the Hudson Valley, which is suburbs, north yeah. of New York City. Yeah. What brought you back to New York? Were you always, when you were out in LA and Hollywood, were you still missing the East Coast? Are you an well, East well, Coast kid? I, I, I never moved there, actually. Never I never did. Lucy wanted, Lucy wanted to buy us a house. Lucy wanted us to do a lot of things. Um, no, I was never, because you have to drive everywhere there, and I'm a city guy, even up here. I'm close enough to New York to go into the city. Uh, but when I was younger, no. So I spent a great deal of time out there in those last 1980 to 1989, but I never really officially, I never officially moved there. Uh, are you working on some projects now that you want to share with us? Are there other things that you have coming no, the, up you're the, excited the, about? The, the Lucy film is all encompassing, yeah. you know, because I'm executive producer with, with, with Radar Pictures, a great film company, independent film company, in Los Angeles, they approached me last year. They were very interested in in in, um, in doing this with me, and um, but film is you know a whole different medium, and you have to get a screenwriter, and you have to get a director, and you have to get a star, and you have to get all the the crew together, and so that's what we're doing now. Um, but we're very excited and very optimistic that we're going to make this work, and I think. And maybe your your fans from around the world, I, I would love to hear what they think of it. I, I'm hoping that they would enjoy watching a movie about my life with Lucy. Um, it's never been done before. You know, all the movies to date have been Lucy Desi, you know, uh, yes. their, their turbulent marriage and their on screen and 
there's a new one coming out with Nicole Kidman. And, yes. You know, but mine is mine is unique because it's the last 10 years. So I hope people will want to see it. I, I know I would love to see it on screen. So I'm excited about that. So that's that's that takes up that takes up a lot of my time. I'm writing a couple of other things, a one act play and and um, doing some special material for people. But I'm really excited about and we're really in the thick of it now. We're really in the thick of it. So I hope um, what's her name who loves me from what, what's the gal's name who loves me and need I say more? I hope she's I hope she wants to watch a good I love Lucy. Marsha so, Watson. Marsha Watson, I want you to watch this. It's probably going to be on Netflix or something like that, so you could stream it. But I hope that you um, have some nice things to say about it when you do see it. That's very exciting. I mean, congratulations on Thank all you. Of this. Yeah, and, I am excited about that. You know, it's uh, it's going to take time, but I, I'm, I'm I, again, I think Lucy wants it done. Big Lucy in the in the in the sky wants it done, so I think it's going to happen. You still talk to her. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah yes. You, oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, you don't have to. Uh, you don't yeah. have to amplify that. I right. still talk to her. She still talks to me. Um, sometimes she pisses me off. Sometimes I piss her off. But uh, no, she's very, she's very present in my life. And she told me, "Do the Jim Master show. You'll love it." I tell you, that's exactly so, what I thought. That's exactly. You, you can't argue with her. You know? Um, you know, it's really interesting in reference to Florence Henderson. Um, one of the last times I got a chance to see her was at a gala event in Connecticut uh, for Dana's Angels Research Trust. And um, usually that is uh, emceed by um, Kathy Lee Gifford and, of course, Frank Gifford at the time. And uh, a beautiful event. And I had walked in the room and was, it was, there was sort of a, you know, like appetizers, cocktails uh, event beforehand. Uh, before everybody went into the theater in uh, Stamford, Connecticut. And I believe it was either Kenny Loggins or Gladys Knight and the Pips that were there performing all to raise money for Dana, Dana's Angels Research Trust. And that particular event, uh, Frank had passed. So Kathy Lee wasn't there to do the emceeing. So they had brought in... Um, who was actually a family friend of the family that puts on the, the Morella family that puts on the event, Florence Henderson. And um, it was absolutely unbelievable. One of these, you can relate to this, I'm sure, experiences where I was there and we're all friends, but I was there and the family brought me into the VIP room and you could see Florence way on the other side of the room with mobs of people uh, that, you know, probably paid money or donated it or what have you to, to have that opportunity to get a photo with her or whatever it may be. And I had come in, I was brought in, led into the room. They said, uh, we want you to uh, chat with Florence. And I said, well, well, you know, I'll wait till everybody else gets to chat with her and, you know, sort of like whatever later on we can do it. But you have all these people that are like lined up and they're excited and let them go first. And I'm, you know, I'm here. Well, there was a, it was very surreal because you saw all of just these, these people in darkness in a way, and you saw this bright spotlight on Florence and she was wearing a white pantsuit and her hair was beautifully done. And it was just really amazing. Somehow through all that darkness of all those people, she sees me bring, being led into the room. She makes an about face and like Moses parts the sea and comes straight for me through all these people that are waiting and that are there. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Florence Henderson, Carol Brady, Mrs. Brady is coming towards me. What's happening? Uh, there was no pre-introduction or anything. She just came right to me. She tells the photographer, I want a picture with him. So the photographer repositions, calibrates, takes photo. And then we just started this automatic conversation in the middle of this room that wasn't planned, wasn't predictable. And from that day forward, you know, it remained similar to like what you're saying. Um, and every time we were moving around in that theater, every step I took, every step she took, 
There I was again. There she was. The elevator doors opened up. She was with her daughters. There she is again. I come around a corner. There she is again. It was absolutely unbelievable. And then we were all together and we were with Sonny Grasso, who was, um, they patterned the, the movie, The French Connection. Uh, he was a detective in New York and that French Connection was uh, really about him and, and the whole department. And so we were all together and the we're having appetizers and drinks. And the photographer then said, um, I want everybody to squeeze together. Uh, we want to take this photo. I'm like, okay. So Florence is also standing in front of me and she plops right down on my leg. And I'm like, wait a minute. And then she, you know, she's getting wobbly. So I'm holding her up. And I'm like, what, am I holding up Carol Brady? I mean, I've just reverted to childhood here somehow. <laughs> And, uh, and she had a great sense of humor. I mean, she's dearly missed. She was a beautiful person, a great talent. But when she rose up in her white pants suit, she looked so angelic. Uh, I said, Florence, I, I don't think I'm ever going to wash these pants again. And she <laughs> turned around. Now, this is Mrs. Brady. <laughs> I bet you won't, Jim. <laughs> it was... Great story. She's just, she was just, yeah. Now, what was really interesting about that was, you know, even working in this industry, um, there's various people you'd love to meet that you, you're honored by and respect. And But when you're in these roles where you are doing the interviewing or you're the, the host or the, you can't get some people go get over the top. And not everybody likes that, you know, you have to be able to temper your excitement and you have to be able to keep things uh, in check, especially if you are in a television studio, radio studio, or wherever you are with that person that you've always admired all those years. And uh, she was on the list. Uh, Dick Van Dyke is still on that list. So if you want to make a few phone calls, I'd love to chat with him. Uh, she was always on the list of somebody that, uh, and Carol Burnett as well. Uh, and Lucy, that I would love to have met, Dick Van Dyke as well. Um, a number of people have said to me, and I'm sure you'll understand this, that because not far after that, that's when she passed away. She was uh, rooting on Maureen McCormick, who was in Dancing with the Stars, competing on ABC. And um, Thanksgiving Day, my phone blows up. And I'm like, what's going on? And there's all these, and on Facebook, all these messages of sympathy I was getting. And I'm like, wait a minute. I don't, I'm not aware of what's going on here. Did a family member pass away? What's going on? And it was everybody sending condolences to me for the passing of Florence Henderson, knowing, you know, what I would just, part of what I just described now. And I was getting all of this incredible love, which was really beautiful. And it really, really surprised me. A number of people said to me that, and I'm sure you feel the same way, maybe about Lucille Ball, um, that you were supposed to meet before her passing. She was to meet you and you were to meet your, your, your energies were supposed to connect prior to her passing. Uh, at first I was like, that's, ah, what are you talking about? And now I kind of feel that way because it was so effortless and so automatic. Um, it wasn't Florence Henderson and Jim Masters. It was, hi, how are you? Matter of fact, even at the very end of this gala event, and you know, there was, we chatted after as well, but after this gala event, you know, I'm over by the door and I'm chatting with colleagues and friends and all of a sudden, you know, she's leaving with her daughters and again, comes out of the elevator, makes a beeline straight towards me and gives me a kiss on the cheek and says, I just, I said to her, it was such an honor and a pleasure to chat with you and have the conversation we had and to meet you as well. And I just want to let you know that you've touched many people over the years with your extraordinary talent and your wit and wisdom and, and all the productions and shows and things that you've been involved in, Florence, you've made a difference in the lives of others. And then she uh, gave me a kiss on the cheek and she said, I just want to know that one of the highlights of my evening was that I had an opportunity to meet you, Jim, and I'll never forget this night. And I wish you and your family a very happy Thanksgiving. Uh, that 
one of those knock him dead moments. Uh, I'm sure you can relate to on multiple levels, uh, Lee. Um, really extraordinary. I, and one of those, I, I mean, you probably feel like you were supposed to meet Lucille Ball and Lucille Ball was supposed to meet you. I feel the same thing about uh, Florence Henderson, Carol Burnett as well, but especially with that uncanny way that she mm -hmm. parted the seas and went through all these people and came straight to me. Uh, it was very interesting and very beautiful. That's lovely. And I'm, probably, I'm sure you feel the same way with the, the wonderful oh, relationship yeah. with Lucy. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Really amazing, Lee. And, and again, congratulations on everything that. Uh, thank you, that thank you. Inspired, you know. This is uh, this was a great, this was a great afternoon. I really, really, really enjoyed this, and I thank you for asking me. And uh, just how you do the show and how you get people involved all over the world. Um, it's lovely. So if, you know, if, uh, if I made a few new friends, then I consider myself blessed and, um, the book is available. Now I'll do my little shameless plug. Yes, the book is the available book at Amazon.com. <laughs> and if you prefer to listen to it, which is fun, it's my voice well, that's uh, cool. on audible. audible. And, um, I just am very grateful that people remember Lucy and she's touched their lives so much. Yeah. And I was able to, kind of just give people an introduction to the real Lucy and the Lucy, what we call the lost Lucy years, the years that, that she wasn't in the spotlight, that she was out of the spotlight, because that's really the legitimate Lucy. That's who she really, really was. Um, a, a plug also for TCM, Turner Classic Movies, is um, they do these podcasts. Uh, they're called The Plot Thickens, and uh, everybody listens to podcasts now. And they're doing a 10 part series on Lucille Ball from birth to death, beginning in October. And I am in episode nine and 10, I believe, because it goes chronologically. So obviously I would be in the last and, and possibly in the first with a, a little montage they're doing. But I haven't heard any of it, but I had a five and a half hour interview with the producers at TCM last year. And um, it went real well, and I think I think everybody's really, really going to love it. It's uh, it's uh, they're promoting it already, and they want to coincide it with the 70th anniversary of I Love Lucy, which is October 15th, 1951. It started to so October 15th, 2021. So uh, there's oh there it was a pleasure with them. Oh there we go. I love I love I love this. This is crack. It's, this is this is this is smart. This is you are you've got you've got some really great stuff going on here. I'm so happy that these people had a chance. I was able to meet them. And, oh, well, um, spread the word about our show if you know of other folks oh, no, that you'd no, like to I, hop on. I would yeah. love that. Well, I have five thousand Facebook friends, so and you put it so on maybe. Facebook. So, <laughs> and the fact that it's archived, and so you know, because I realize not everybody's around at three o'clock in the afternoon on a fall Saturday. Especially but, on 11, um, yeah. but yeah, especially today. But um, I thank you and I thank all the, the wonderful people who you have uh, listening to you. It, it was a really pleasure to be with you today. The love it is. Well, I certainly uh, hope, Lee, that the show met whatever expectations that you had and that uh, you enjoyed the time with me as much as I certainly have with you. This was a wonderful conversation. It was a pleasure to get a chance to to chat with you and converse. Like I said, I don't call these interviews. I call these uh, conversations. And uh, I hope the show again met whatever expectations uh, that you had and you enjoyed the time with me as much as I have with you, Lee. I did. If we do the movie, ask me back. I'd love to come back. Yes. And I'll be there for the premiere and everything else. I would look forward to that. And somebody else that was an icon who is uh, sort of my sidekick here, who makes an appearance usually at the tail end of the show. George Burns was with us this afternoon as well. Uh, say good night, Gracie. <laughs> say good night, Gracie. <laughs> uh, never had a chance uh, to come across him, have you? Oh yeah, you did. Oh, many yeah, in fact, so many times, and each time Lucy would introduce me as if it was the first time. Yeah, and I, I forgot where it was, but it was at some place, and he went, "Jesus, Lucy, if you introduce me to this guy one more time." <laughs> I'm going to kill you and him. No, that's uh, absolutely, absolutely the truth. Lucy Lee, this is George. George Burns is Lee. 
Lucy, I met him. I met him last year. I met him the year before, but no, he was amazing. You know, he was a very, very good friend of Lucy's. Very good yeah. friend of Lucy's. I want to show so, you a couple of nice comments that are coming in from the Lovities. Uh, Jane in Sweden says, this has been a great show. Thanks, Lee, for visiting us. And Jim, you are very welcome. Thank you, Jane. Uh, Merlin says, you and Tom have a good day. Merlin in thank Canada. Thank you, Merlin in Canada. Hearts from uh, Anne and uh, Anne, thank you very much. Anne did the uh, super chat and supported the show earlier. Thank you. I really appreciate that, Anne. That's a very beautiful thing for you to do. Um, so that was just very heartwarming. And uh, you're welcome from Toby and Juanita in South Africa says, great show once more. Thank you, Lee, for spending time with us and sharing your stories. And Christine Clifton in North Carolina. Lee, thanks for sharing some of your friendship moments with Lucy. Incredibly interesting. Your book should be a great success. You and Jim provided us a lovely afternoon. Thank, Thank you, you very Christine. much. Congratulations from Toby. Another great conversation from Anne in Southern California. Uh, it was a pleasure from Merlin. Congratulations from Toby. Uh, really nice words here. Thank you. Thank Jerry you. Larson, Thank you. Kansas. Thank you, Lee, for an enjoyable afternoon. Love hearing all your wonderful stories and appreciate your sharing about your fantastic relationship with Lucy. And uh, good stuff. And Christine Clifton earlier had said, Lee, you and the screen look fabulous. Loving this conversation. <laughs> Lee is a true lovety on the Gym Masters. I, I, show. Yeah, I'm going to use that. Lovety Lee. Lovety Lee. Lovety Lee. That's it. Right off. Thank you, Jim, again. I appreciate it. Ah, the pleasure was all mine. Uh, you be well. And as I say to all the guests, uh, now go stretch those legs and get that circulation going, my friend. <laughs> and hopefully will. Uh, we'll break bread soon in person. That would really be a pleasure. Absolutely. Everybody stay safe and keep healthy. All right. You have a good weekend and we'll see you again, Lee. You take care, okay? Okay. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now. Lee Tannen here on the Gym Masters Show Live. We certainly hope you enjoyed it here on our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. You got a chance to really hear about the book. Again, uh, let's call up that book and we'll show you the book a little bit uh, more in case you missed it. There is the book, I Loved Lucy, My Friendship with Lucio Ball, written by our very special guest, Lee Tannen, who again had this uh, wonderful friendship with the incredible Lucio Ball, who we love as well some more photos that we showed earlier. Um, really cool stuff, if you didn't see any of it. And we thank Lee for these photos he allowed us to use during the course of our broadcast. Uh, some really beautiful shots uh, as well. Love that photo as well. Yep, really beautiful stuff. And uh, again, the book available, Amazon. There's also audible.com if you want to hear him uh, narrate it as well. I love Lucy. And uh, that was the play too. It turned into a play. And now he's talking about it possibly being uh, a movie, which is kind of uh, cool and interesting as well. We thank our special guest, Lee Tannen, author of I Loved Lucy, My Friendship with Lucy of All, coming to us live and direct from New York in beautiful Hudson Valley, New York, which is just north of uh, New York City, next to Connecticut. And uh, we thank Anne. Anne, there's that super sticker that you did. Thank you very much. You know, we have during our live shows, if you want to support the series and all the work we do, super chat, super stickers, super thanks, super emojis, something that YouTube actually made available to us because I guess we reached a certain uh, milestone with them and Anne just did that. Thank you very much. That really uh, we'll put that to good use towards equipment and everything else that uh, it takes to put this uh, series together. You guys are amazing. Let's check some of the uh, additional comments that we have here. Uh, Joan Sandow says, this was a wonderful afternoon. Thank you, Lee. And of course, Jim, you're the best. Thank you very much. I want to let you know, coming up at 6 p.m., that is about an hour and a half from now, 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, we have a special uh, mini version of the Gym Master Show live. Not uh, as um, lengthy as these conversations are, but it's a short um, episode, maybe 10, 15 minutes. That's going to be happening at 6 p.m. Eastern uh, this evening. Uh, it's a special 9-11 remembrance and a very heartwarming story that we're going to be sharing with you with a very special couple. 
Um, we're actually at the um, National uh, September 11th Memorial and Museum with this couple. And it was for a television news segment uh, that I had the honor of uh, hosting and reporting for. And we're going to share that with you tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific here on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Um, and of course, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, uh, Gym Masters TV, we would absolutely love it if you did. I give it a um, give it some lovity, uh, leave a thumbs up for us on this episode, and um, share a comment or two on this episode as well. If you enjoyed yourself, we love that. We love that. Toby says, and if lovity is click the dollar sign button, you can have a super sticker. It's a way to leave a kind tip. Yeah, that actually is something. And there's something called super thanks too. I think on the episodes afterwards. That's something new. Um, thank a blissful angel. I love that name. Thank you, Jim, for bringing back memory of Lucy. And thanks to Lee for sharing. I look forward to reading the book. That is wonderful. Uh, it is really a page turner. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And um, thanks for all the great comments, gang. So we'll be back in about an hour and a half. Again, we do these shows live. So if you're watching this later on, you know, after today, then obviously, what I'm saying now doesn't mean much because you can watch it at any time because we archive all of our episodes. Matter of fact, I think we're close to 400 at the time of this show, up to some 480 episodes with guests from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, music, uh, culinary arts, sports, comedy, inspiration, authors, um, you name it, health and wellness, science and nature, the, the amount of people that have come through. And I really appreciate all the comments that the guests have to say about the Gym Masters show live, what we're doing here with our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series, bringing back the lost art of conversation and the way that we do, which uh, harkens back to uh, a time when people had conversations, not just quick interviews, uh, really good, solid conversations, bringing in the viewers and sharing all the levity with all of you from around the world. We always have a good time on this show. And um, we have special moments too. And uh, again, if you like what you're seeing, you can see, you can binge watch the episodes uh, on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. They are all there. We want to thank everybody who's watching the Gym Masters Show Live live. And we also want to thank those of you who are watching right now who are not commenting. You're just as valuable as all the great levities that comment during the show so uh, enthusiastically. And those of you who are watching weeks and weeks, months, years after, and you just happen to stumble on our series, The Gym Master Show Live, welcome. It's so great to have you with us as well. And uh, we appreciate you being here and watching this episode and all the episodes of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. We always have a good time with all of you. And um, more to come. I want to let you know, again, as I mentioned, a special episode coming up 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, 3 p.m. Pacific tonight. A very special, beautiful story coming up. Uh, I hope you'll join us for that. That's um, It's about 15 minutes long, and that's about it. Just a nice, quiet, peaceful, kind remembrance on 9-11. Uh, um, also, boy, there's so many things I want to share with you guys, but we we... We have so much going on all the time. Um, I want to let you know on Monday, we've got an amazing guest, Denise Nicholas. She was in the television series Room 222. That's right. That beloved series that was on ABC. She was also in In the Heat of the Night on NBC with none other than Carol O'Connor, who you may remember also played Archie Bunker on All in the Family and so much more. An incredible television actress, Hollywood icon, brilliant film actress, stage actress, but also an author. She's got several books out. There's one particular book we're going to share with you during the course of the conversation. She's also a prominent uh, activist for civil rights and causes that she believes in as well. Uh, she's going to be with us this Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, live on the Gym Masters Show Live. So join us for that and we've got a bevy of amazing guests coming up all next week as well. And again, we're live right now. So what I'm saying, if you're watching this five months from now, all you do is just scroll and binge watch the episodes. These episodes will have already been done by then. <laughs> but since our show is live and interactive, 
um, we always like to uh, update our audience on some of the cool things that are happening. Great show once more. And thank you, Lee, for spending time with us and sharing the stories. That is Juanita. We thank you as well. And yes, uh, Room 222, Michael Constantine. Yes, that's right. That's exactly, I know. Yes, I know. It's just ironic sometimes how some of these things occur as we, um, you know, as we just really <laughs> do these shows. And it's just some of the things that happen at the same time. Uh, Jim, I'm going to be spending uh, or sending you a serious and important email. Um, hopefully we'll see it. We are, uh, we have the other show coming up and then we're going to be off for the rest of the weekend. We have family time tomorrow. Uh, so we won't be here on Sunday. It gives you a good time to uh, enjoy your family time and friends and your loved ones. And also, um, take time for yourself as we always say. And, and of course you can always binge watch the over 400 and 75 episodes and counting of the Jim Master Show Live. Thanks, Ann. I appreciate that. Jim, you have the best guests. Thank you very much. Yes. You know, I've been told that, Toby. Intuitive, high-level empath, and operating from our higher consciousness. And I think that's kind of cool. I love it. Um, yeah, it's a very beautiful tonight when we have coming up uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Um the special episode of the Jim Masters Show Live. I think you're going to enjoy that. Uh, so hope you can join that, us for that. If you can't, then uh, you can see it in the archives after it airs. Uh, thank you for coming on and telling us those wonderful stories. That was Alessandra in uh, North Carolina. Thank you for being with us as well. And um, good stuff. If you want to see some of the folks that are coming on next week uh, as well, in addition to... Um, Denise on Monday, just check out our YouTube channel or you're on it now, but just scroll through. You can see some of the amazing folks that are coming on this week right here for you on our entertainment lifestyle talk show series. Juanita says another great show, Jim. Good night, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. You too as well. And um, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, now go take care of that voice. Thank you very much. There's nothing wrong with the voice. I think maybe I'm closer to the microphone. So you're actually hearing the real voice. It's such a pleasure to have all of you with us here on the Gym Master Show Live, the show that brings you light, love, and levity, and whatever the heck else happens, because anything happens when you're live. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm a little closer to the mic, so it sounds a little deeper for you. Uh, but it's the actual voice. Uh, see you, all of you beautiful loveties later. You got it as well. And um, oh, cool. Great idea. You can binge watch with bonbons. Does that not sound like a new TV show? Binge watch with bonbons? <laughs> you can do that. You can do that. Um, Jim, thanks for a fascinating conversation with Lee today. A great lineup for next week's episodes. Birthday uh, countdown. Wow, my birthday's in uh, 13 days from now on September 24th. Even I'm, I'm so busy. It's And we have so many, there's so many birthdays. My cousin's was last week. My cousin Kathy, mine's on the 24th. My brother-in-law's is a couple of days after that. Uh, one of my best friends in New York that I've known for years, Mike, his birthday is two days after mine. My godson and nephews is on October 3rd. It's a real run of birthdays that are happening this time of the year. But uh, thanks for the mini episode. My pleasure. That's coming up tonight at 6 Eastern. And um, we love all of you as well. And Anne says, see all of you beautiful loveties later. We are going to have some lunch. We haven't had lunch yet. It's about quarter to five here and uh, Eastern. And uh, thank you very much, gang. You are the very, very best. So uh, enjoy the rest of your time, uh, your day. If you're with us for the uh, special tribute episode coming up, at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. Uh, we appreciate that. If not, you can see it in the archives as well. All right. I think that's about it, right? Uh, we toast you. We showed you George Burns. All the guests always have a kick out of George Burns when we show him at the very end of our episodes. And thank you, Ann. I appreciate that. And thanks again for that uh, super sticker. That was very kind of you as well. That helps support our show. Remember, kindness matters, gang. We say that all the time. A few other things that we do. 
when I remember to do them because sometimes there's so much going on here. I know it looks so calm, but there's so much going on behind the scenes here with our shows. Uh, don't forget to boom, share the lovity. Don't forget to smile. That's very important. Also, uh, find your Zen place. Mine is my work in television, radio, stage, and film, on air, on camera, behind the scenes over the years as well. I love what I do and do what I love, and hopefully you get a chance to do that as well. Our YouTube channel is the one you're watching right now, Jim Masters TV. We would positively, absolutely love it if you have subscribed. If you've done so already, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Tell everybody else about our series. Let them know about this special place called the Jim Masters Show Live. The channel, Jim Masters TV on YouTube, is uh, really dedicated to entertaining all of you. And sometimes we're educated and informed and inspired along the way, which is really, really cool. That's uh, sort of the bonus to what we do here. You guys are the best. All right, we'll check out one more comment here. Uh, goodbye, everyone from France. Goodbye, everyone. Love you, Jim. We love you back, uh, Nias. It's always beautiful when you're here with us from wonderful France. I hope you have a wonderful weekend as well. And Toby, yes, thank you very much. You're working hard there on the West Coast, spreading the word. Thanks to all of you who share the links on your Facebook and Instagram and Twitter pages to all of our episodes. You're telling everybody about the Gym Masters Show Live. We're working hard behind the scenes to entertain and have a good time with all of you. Uh, spread the word and continue to tell everybody about our series. We would love that. We are going to uh, scoot off for now. Thanks for being with us. We thank once again our very special guest, Lee Tannen, author of I Loved Lucy, My Friendship with Lucille Ball. And uh, that was beautiful. I've always uh, admired and respected Lucille Ball and loved, uh, loved her talent and her spirit, an amazing person but also a real person. Um, you know, everybody that you see on television and on movies and uh, on stage, they have real lives and uh, they have fears and worries and happiness and joys and loss. We all do, like every single one of you watching right now. Uh, so if we can remember to uh, stick together and to uh, take care of one another, because it's so important. I notice the color changes. I get redder when I'm over here. Wow, it looks like I got a sunburn for some reason. And then it changes when I'm over here. Look at that. I think it's because it's still afternoon, so there's some other light that's penetrating through the windows that's changing that effect. That's kind of cool. One minute I get a, a sun tan, and the next minute I don't. <laughs> I'm going to stay over here. All right, gang, we have a lot of fun in the show. And uh, have a great afternoon and evening, all you too, Sherry. And uh, again, episode, uh, special episode coming up at 6 p.m. Eastern, um, 3 p.m. Pacific uh, on 9-11. We love you all. Thanks for being with us. You can find me also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Jim Masters TV. I know a lot of you are following, liking, and we appreciate that as well. And uh, we're going to duck out and we'll see you soon. Uh, couple of hours, about two hours, one hour from now, we're on with our special mini 9-11 episode. Till then for all of us, thanks for being with us. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your weekend. We love you all and, and take care and be well. Thanks for joining us in this episode of the Gym Master Show Live. Cheers.